I'm going to do my second William Marshall poem, but first, given the comments on drummers by a previous one, I thought I ought to tell you a very brief story that my lady wife refers to as the Battle of the Bands. Uh, this was some years ago at Pensick, and I had been quite ill before Pensick, and the result was that that Pensick, I was running my bardic circle in a whisper. And the, we were camped up on the Serengeti, which is not where we usually camp. And next to us was the King Mulan Steel. And they were pleasant enough neighborhoods, neighbors during the week, but the final night they were having a party, a very loud drumming and dancing party. As and we do. had a harp that came into camp. And it's very hard to either run a bardic circle in a whisper or play a harp for anybody's entertainment when people next door to you are making very loud noises. Well, I bided my time until two-thirds of the Enchanted Ground Defense Force came back into camp. And I then gave them my instructions, and our neighbors of Anstior were treated to a brief Shom concert at very short range. For those of you who are not familiar with it, a Shom can drive a bagpipe from the field. And when their party started again, it was much quieter. For loyally serving his dying lord, William the Marshal was given in ward a virtuous maiden, wise and fair, Strongbow's daughter and only heir. The rest of that tale is easy to tell. William is wedded with Isabel, the bachelor knight who lived by his sword in the space of a night has become a lord. Mighty of men and gold and rights, her Norman lands feed 43 knights. In Pembroke alone, if all else fails, he can rule like a prince on the marches of Wales. But better yet doth Isabel bring. Her mother was daughter to Leinster's king. A quarter of Ireland wed and won by Richard Strongbow, who had no son. Long in battle and tourney field, as William labored with lance and shield, First and foremost in all men's sight, never defeated in any fight. But now the knight plays a bigger game. Earl of Pembroke in all save name, a wealthy baron in Normandy, all but a king by the Irish. The Angevin holdings everywhere are held from Richard as Henry's heir, save only that John, by their father's command, is paramount lord of Ireland. A baron in England or Normandy holds from Richard his land in fee. But William holds by Isabel's hand a fourth of a kingdom from John Lambert. Richard is off on a long crusade. England is full of rumor and raid, each against all with an eye to the throne. William sits silent and guards his own. Richard is taken and held for gold. Now is the hour when truth is told. John goes after his brother's crown. William stands loyal, and John goes down. Richard is back, and at his side, the Bishop of Ely stands in pride. A base-born clerk, but a loyal man who serves his king with a heavy hand. Sire, safe you will never be while John is sovereign across the sea. It would therefore be well, for the sake of thy crown, that the Irish barons to you should bow. My brother John holds Ireland free from our father's hand and not from me. In England, John has no strength to stand, but how am I sovereign of Ireland? Your brother John has a weighty claim, but you are his master in strength and fame. Though strong in law, his case must yield, for parchment is not proof to steal. On either side of either sea, what lord to John shows loyalty? If Ireland you claim today, where is the knight to say you may? The bishop fell silent and looked at his lord. The king stood in thought with one hand on his sword, gazing out over that glittering crowd that turned to the bishop and cried out aloud, By the legs of sweet Jesus, see there where there stands the mightiest baron in all Ireland. Go speak to our marshal and prove here tonight that the barons of Ireland kneel and fight. As 
sudden and silent as arrow from string, the bishop sped off at the word of his king, and passing by many of power and pride, went straight to the marshal and drew him aside. Sir William, good marshal, as, as all men can see, Prince John is defeated in, in grace, face treachery. Therefore, I bring you King Richard's command that you kneel now to him for your Irish land. The knight replied, I will bow down for English land to the English crown. Now, English land for the English crown. But Leinster never. Damn it. I will bow down for English land to the English crown. Pembroke I hold as Richard's man, but Le as Richard from Richard's hand, but Leinster as his brother's man. When John went after his brother's crown, I did my best to pull him down. If Richard is after his brother's land, I will withstand him as best I can. I am, no, am a knight and owe my sword for English land to my English lord. But Leinster never was English land, nor Richard sovereign of Ireland. So loud his voice rang through the hall that men could hear it from wall to wall. Richard stood silent and all beside. Why loud the bishop in wrath replied, I see a knight to his sovereign's cost, sowing a garden against the frost. None can doubt it a prudent thing to serve a prince who may yet be king. The knight replied, as you desire, so sir priest with vine or bride. Some might suppose it a perilous thing to stand for justice against the king. But a knight must cleave with hand and sword and all his strength to his spoken word. Pembroke I hold from Richard's hand, but Leinster is his brother's hand. When John went after his brother's crown, I did my best to pull him down. If Richard is after his brother's land, I will maintain as best I can. Richard strode to the marshal's side. It seems, Sir Bishop, your test is tried. And I think my crown I may safely wear while my knights hold true to the oath.